respected students welcome back everyone you all know that we have started the playlist about subscribers mock interview okay and as promised i am also going to make answers video for it so the second mock interview which i have uploaded this video is the answers video for it i am going to tell you each and every answer properly orally make sure that you are taking pen and notebook and always be a good listener if you are entering into it industry so whatever i am going to tell please listen it carefully and write down in your notebook and make notes for it and these are the answers which uh, sorry these are the questions which will be asking your real time interviews okay real time interviews of mnc's or any startup what you are going to give these only questions will be asked see about 20 25 questions are there i am going to tell you properly so we will start with the video but before starting if you are new on our channel make sure you are subscribing and playing uh, pressing bell icon for all upcoming videos we have made more than 100 videos of power bi and completely free of cost that content is there if um, about in last two years about thousands of students have got the job from that content frankly speaking you can go through all the content only 30 hours of content it is and follow us on social media especially instagram and telegram so now let's start with the video the first question which i asked to that guy was that what means in introduction he said that he had work on aggregation and everything so i asked him that what is your understanding about group buy see uh, just in basic i will tell you with the help of this uh, excel sheet so we are having this table player name and runs code okay you can see player name and runs what they have scored there so we are having player dhoni rohit and kohli so in first match dhoni scored 50 rohit uh, 30 so again 40 kohli 20 50 80 90 like this we are having the table and number of innings they played so what group by is going to do see group by is aggregating whether it is some average it is doing so what it has done Dhoni has came two times 50 plus 90 140 Rohit has came two times 30 plus 40 70 Kohli came three times 20 plus 50 70 plus 180 150 and here average it is done okay divided by 2 divided by 2 and Kohli divided by 3 reason is because Kohli is coming 3 times that's it this is the concept of group by very simple it is okay group by is nothing but it is just aggregating the data some average whatever the records are coming 5 10 15 times it is just aggregating the data that's it what is the work of group by it is that simple but this concept is very important this basic concept is very important when it comes to interview or real time process Okay. So second question was, what was your connectivity mode? So see, connectivity modes are mostly three. The first is import mode. Okay. The second is direct query and third is live connection. Okay, guys. So I have made specific video for that. You can watch that also. But in this video also, I am going to tell you answer of it. But 10-15 minutes specific video is there. You can watch it. You will find that in our playlist. So now uh, coming with what was your connectivity mode? I have asking. So he had answer with import mode C. Mostly 80% of project, 70 to 80% of project are there on import mode only because mostly roughly how many data is there? 2 million, 3 million max or even 5, 6 lakh rows are only there. Okay, so mostly we go for import mode only. You can store that in Power BI itself. Or 4 or 5 tables are there, 8, 10 columns are there. Basic intermediate level of project if it is there, import mode only is used. Import mode has so many of advantages like we can use time intelligence DAX function, Power BI service, no restrictions are there, DAX calculate column, no restrictions are there, data view, all the data is able to see properly, only two, only one PBX file is there in which data view as well as modeling everything will be there. So these are the some of the advantages of import mode. So mostly import mode is only used, but, but the main point, if your data is huge, huge data is there along with the new incremental data which is going to come daily or on weekly basis if the number of rows are getting added so much so in that case go for live connection or direct query or second thing if your client want to see report on live basis for example if it's 6 5 now okay 6 5 and if you want to see live report till 6 5 6 2 something 
then in that case live connection is good if you want to if your client want to see report on live basis if your client uh, if your data is very very heavy like your data set file is going we can say 800 mb 1 gb okay so in that case go for live connection only but mostly import mode is only used so whatever real time uh, uh, whatever your connectivity mode was please tell that only okay so now coming to third question uh, name some of the columns and table names of your real time project so see first of all we always go with star schema or snowflake schema mostly star schema is there fact and dimension tables are there so fact table uh, names are like sales is there promotion is there market uh, is there or uh, these types of uh, or revenue is there okay these types of name transactions orders these these are the some of the names of fact table and when coming to dimension then customer is there okay then you can say that date date dimension is there so these are the some of the names from uh, these are the some of the names of dimension table then column names what column names you always account number account name then date is there start date end date then sales sales is also one of the column name you can say order quantity okay you can uh, tell these types of names whatever you have used in your real time project or month name quarter name okay so these are some of the common column name or table name the reason why this question is asked to see on what kind of data you had work on whether it is financial or logistics or business domain or healthcare or political data whatever data you have work on so sometimes they ask the table names and uh, column names also see okay? at least i had asked these types of question in the interview now coming to uh, what is the difference between data and e date e omen so see these all falls under time intelligence dax function and date and time function date and falls under time intelligence dax function e date falls under date and time uh, dax functions okay so the main point is this so now coming to date and now it adds uh, the date means function that adds a specific number of unit means on what basis but whether it is days month year so uh, date add always adds on days month and year okay the point is if you will see date add and e date is mostly same only but date add adds on basis of uh, days month year but e date is specifically for months only ठीक है एग्जैक्ट मोस्टली व्हेन द ई डेट इज यूज्ड ना लेट मी टेल यू वन थिंग व्हेन इज ई डेट यूज्ड इफ यू वांट टू कैलकुलेट पास्ट टू मंथ्स सेल्स पास्ट फाइव मंथ्स रेवेन्यू लाइक दिस इफ यू वांट टू कैलकुलेट ना बैक साइड देन इन दैट केस ई डेट इज यूज्ड ई डेट इज नथिंग बट एग्जैक्ट डेट ओनली यू कैन से दिस बैक्स इज आल्सो नोन एज एग्जैक्ट डेट आल्सो ओके द डेट ऐड ऑन्स ऐड्स ऑन डेज मंथ ईयर एंड ई डेट्स ऐड्स ऑन मंथ्स ओनली mostly used for past 3 month 5 months calculation now eo month eo month is the most simple guys uh, for example today's date is 13th of april so if you will do eo month plus 0 then it will show 30th of april okay 30 30 if you will do eo month plus 1 then it will show 31st of may for today's date 13th of april if you will do eo month minus 1 then it will show 31st of march specifically what it is doing it is showing the last date of your month okay that's the difference between date add e date and eo month now coming to what is the difference between source and target table so see mostly this question is not asked to power bi developer it is completely a back data related question but uh, i love to ask this question in real time interview i really want to see What is your understanding about source, target, landing, raw data, all those, all those things? So this question, uh, I'd ask, what is the difference between source and target? So source table always refers to original data location, okay? And uh, target table, on that word only you will understand. Target table refers to destination where ETL data, extracted data, is loaded or migrated. Okay. source table what is refers to original data location or database from where we are taking actually the source 
एंड टारगेट टेबल इज एक्सट्रैक्टेड डेटा वेर इट इज लोडेड माइग्रेटेड ठीक है सोर्स टेबल ऑलवेज कंटेन रॉ ओरिजिनल डेटा वेर एज यू कैन से दारगेट टेबल इज वेर प्रोसेस डेटा इज देर वॉट आई टोल्ड ना ना ई टी एल डेटा वॉट वी से इट इज लाइक मीन्स इफ सोर्स इज इंडिया देन टारगेट इज महाराष्ट्र यू कैन से If source has one lakh rows, then target will definitely have thirty thousand rows only. Target will never ever have more number of rows than source. Never ever, hundred percent answer. Okay. Coming to sixth question, you calculate total sales is fifty thousand. How do you check whether it is correct derived or not? Okay, this is very simple question. It is related to QA also. So, see for example, if you have calculated total sales fifty thousand, so how you Will means decide whether the number is correct or not in Power BI. So two things we do that is known as data validation QA work. So in that case, um, you write SQL query. For example, if your database is SQL, so you write SQL query, and from that SQL query you uh, what we say uh, check whether the sum of that column is same and you verify. Whether in SQL also fifty thousand it is showing and in Power BI also it is showing and also not only SQL only Excel Microsoft Excel which is there in that also we do validation with the help of pivot pivot option is there in Excel you all know so there also we do this thing okay guys so SQL plus Excel we write query in SQL Microsoft SQL Server or whatever Snowflake whatever you are uh, it is there and if Azure Data Factory then we write Query in Azure Data Factory also if your data source is there, and in Microsoft Excel also with the help of pivot we check. So whatever numbers we derive in our Power BI report, those are thoroughly checked in Dev environment, UAT environment, and then migrated to Prod, and then only QA team or clients do sign off. Green signal for that. You have used star schema while validating number. Do you need to use joins? Definitely. The reason is because in star schema one fact table is there, and rest are dimension table. So let's assume that five tables are there total, in which one is fact and four are dimensions. So in that case, if you are joining the table, what is modeling? Modeling is connecting of two tables on basis of same column, same key. So when you will write the query. For validating the numbers, so obviously you will use join only, na? Because primary key, foreign key, all that scenario has came. So if your model contains star schema in Power BI report, so while validating the numbers, if you are writing the query in SQL, definitely you have to use the join. ठीक है? But if there is no model, only one simple table has came from backend, so And if you have created Power BI report, so simple one query line you can write and check it. Not an issue. ठीक है how client used to send data to you? So you see there, there uh, in our case that uh, one website was there and uh, means their home page was there and they used to upload the CSV files there on that directory and uh, dump that files from there and. In Azure Block Storage, and from there we used to take and Python script was written and loaded to our data warehouse in Snowflake. This was our way. Okay, so but this is for very uh, huge big project. Is there? If normal projects are there, then they just send Excel files also directly. So these are the some of the ways. Or sometimes you were on cloud, share panel, all the one drive there they upload that thing. Okay, then data teams works on that everything. Then they load, and then our gateway is connected. Scheduled refresh happens, and new incremental data comes in our Power BI report. Coming to ninth question, incremental data, new data which was there that was loaded on daily basis or weekly basis. See, it completely depends on uh, project to project. In some of mainly what projects had worked, uh, mostly daily basis on daily basis only new data comes. Okay, guys. Whether especially if you are working on finance domains, so definitely daily data you are going to get new incremental data, and uh, mostly on uh, if you are working on like uh, we can say uh, if normal project is there, if financial project, healthcare project, logistics project, it is there. Then on daily basis you will get data, but if political data if you are working, then definitely on weekly basis, monthly basis you will get because not every day elections are happening. In the country, okay. But finance, which is there, trading and all those things, every day it is happening. 
हेल्थ केयर रिलेटेड एक्टिविटीज डेली इट इज हैपनिंग लॉजिस्टिक जोमेटो स्विगी ई कॉमर्स डेली पीपल आर बाइंग सो दीज टाइप्स ऑफ डेटा ऑलवेज कम्स ऑन डेली बेसिस एंड देन वी लोड इन आवर पावर बी एप बट पॉलिटिकल डेटा विच इज दैट कम्स ऑन वीकली और मंथली बेसिस सो वॉट एवर एक्स फॉर यूर प्रोजेक्ट यू कैन टेल दिस आंसर If schedule refresh gets failed, what are primary reasons for it? So, see the main reason for schedule refresh failing. What I personally think that if any column is missing from data side, if database team was working and by mistake if they remove any column or if they have changed the store procedure of or view, and if that column is missing, definitely that uh, schedule refresh will get failed. Point number one, if column is missing. Point number two, even if the column's name is changed from backend, then also scheduled refresh will be failed, and your Power BI report will also show big cross mark. Point number two. Point number three, if check well, if your gateway is off and all those things, so in that case also, if your gateway throws the error, then also scheduled refresh will be full, uh, failed. Point number four, if your uh, authentication or credentials are not properly or somewhere. it is showing error so in that case also scheduled refresh will be failed these are the uh ha huh, these are some of the four five reasons why scheduled refresh will fail but first two are the main primary reasons your report has three four pages and want to add button on page 1 to point okay it is very simple it means that we are having four page report and uh, one button is needed so so that client doesn't need to hover every time to all four pages he can just click on that name of page and he will be over directly to it so see i have made one specific video on this toggle button how to uh, overcome this uh, situation or issue just create one toggle button and with the help of that toggle button you can uh, do it uh, so please watch that video orally i can't tell here uh, you need to watch it practically only okay Coming to twelfth question, what things you should consider before publishing report related to slicer? See, the only very simple thing it is before publishing report. For example, if you are having ten slicers in your report, make sure that nothing is selected in that slicer, or your report is not filtering on any selection on slicer. For example, you are having countries, India. Australia and US in your slicer three countries, and for example, if your data is uh, slicer is filtered on India, and if you publish that, then your report will, when client will open that report, then it will show only numbers related to India only. He have to filter out or remove that filters from his own, and which is very bad habit. Okay. If client has to do manual these types of activity, then client will get angry. He will raise the issue, and again manager will scold you, and all those things will happen. So the most important thing before publishing the report in real time project is that make sure that all the slicers which are there, nothing is selected into it. Okay, it must not be filtered on anything. we have two columns account name account number how to merge it and avoid blanks so see this question in around uh, interview number 1 also i have asked and again i am asking here so see we will just create one calculate column with with blank and account name like this we will make tags and uh, we will create it and for example even if uh, here i miss that uh, dash i guess here one dash is also there hyphen i miss that so in that case if even if completely blank account name and account number is there then then dash will also not come and we we create like this uh, calculate column to merge to concatenate okay we are having different two different columns account name and account number so we have just merged it like this and here one dash is there that i missed actually sorry for that Okay, fourteenth question was tell me something about calendar dim table. So see, calendar dim table is the most important or equivalent to fact table only. The which is the most important table in model fact table only, no doubt. But somewhere calendar dim or date dim table is also equivalent to that. Because see, whatever time intelligence tax functions you are going to use, date and time tax functions you are going to use, so that will fall under this uh, dimension table only, na? so start date end date 
or as of date, trade date, or there are many types of date means uh, uh, order date is there, then stock date is there, then date is the main thing and uh, whatever whether it is a finance project healthcare if healthcare project is there then they will check that in march 2024 how many people survived from covid how many people died so there also date column is used if finance is there okay how many people last year had profit loss so you need january 2023 to december 2023 data so date table is the i would say means if dime fact table is heart of modeling modeling is heart of like power bi no doubt in that but in that if model uh, fact tables are heart of modeling then i would say that date dimensions are completely spinal cord of uh, it if date table or date attribute column is not there then there is no point in creating power bi report on it okay so these types of kpi okay or uh, on which date, which month, which year and everything those are hundred percent asked in real time projects also by clients to work on that or in uh, projects also they are going to ask and in interviews also they are going to ask how to calculate this and that okay so dimension table is very important no doubt but make sure that for that column data type which is there that is pass date okay date data type should be passed properly and format which is there like mmdd four times y or ddmm four times y always uh, us clients which are there they ask for mmdd only so don't go with ddmm what is followed uh, what is followed in india so these are some of the things if you are getting date column in numbers then convert with that column from example to date data type these are some of the things you should follow properly and in options and setting, regional settings, always do English US. Okay, these are some of the things you can follow. Question number 15, how to write weekend week DAX? So see, again, you can uh, use this DAX. If calendar deem day of week greater than six, then whether it is weekend or weekday. Okay, like this, then it will create one new calculate column. And whatever your date is there, then uh, it will pass uh, whether weekend or uh, weekday for it and this day of week I have made from power query only following our then date column okay now how many times you connected with client in a week so see uh, the most important thing is that uh, in mostly see uh, Tuesday and Thursday which are there those are business days actually okay those are business days so in this case if you are a power bi developer with three four five years of experience so definitely you will be in those meetings and if you have one or two years of experience then you may be excluded from that meeting business operations meeting those are known on tuesdays and thursdays those are there so it depends on your position but mostly you can say that in a week once you used to have interaction with client along with your manager you can say don't say that one on one it was there or else if you had interaction one on one also then also you can say easily that I had interaction one on one but if you are quite confident on that then only say okay so like this you can say two times you had interaction with client uh, half half hours meeting was there whatever report you have created in day one or night or previously you used to showcase you used to demo to the client okay and uh, then also send that link to client and client used to come next time in next meeting with some of the observation these were some of the things uh, what were followed uh, i want uh, 16 number question okay i missed i guess uh, what is fiscal year in usa see this question why it is asked now the reason is because uh, you have, you say that your client was from us and uh, so in our india you know that fiscal year is from 1st of april to 31st of march so if you are work on work with us client and you all know that time intelligence and date time functions this are used and date related kpis are used so always they ask what is fiscal year in us like this so you can say that uh, from 1st of october it starts to 30th of september okay in usa 1st october to 30th of september so this next question i want to find name starting with v in sql so see this query which is there 
select star from employee info where employee name is V. This is one uh, way from which you can find the name starting with V. Or this second is that select star from employee info where employee name like in this uh, V and then dash you can do. So it will show properly. Okay. So 18th question, two answers are there actually. 19th is tell second type of normalization. So see, second type of normalization, normalization is all about remember redundancy. Okay. So in that case, uh, if any redundant data, jump dimension, all which are there, then you remove it from there. Second type of normal, see, uh, even for this normalization, I would really say that please watch my that video 10 15 minutes. I have told there properly in our data concepts playlist this uh, video you will find here even if i try to tell orally also you will not understand but it is like uh, you can break the data or we can say if uh, where we have used in one scenario is that uh, we had one table and we had to create modeling so we broke that table into two three tables and then connected so depend full dependency and all those things we checked and on that basis we uh, broke that data and made modeling but please watch my that video practically so it will help you in th that case do you know what is the landing raw data wall staging okay so see uh, first of all the what we fetch from power bi is store procedure of or view and that view is made from this data wall okay not from landing raw staging it is made from da data wall so there is hierarchy followed like a landing raw data wall view this uh, view this hierarchy is followed so landing you can say it is india raw then it is again maharashtra view is like pune like this it is followed so what is landing uh, that is we can say that it is initial destination for incoming data is there okay then uh, temporary storage uh, area where raw data is stored it is known as landing mostly and raw data is it is original data as it was captured or received from various sources okay raw data retains all its original detail which can be used for historical analysis then staging is that you can say that uh, data where data is clean or transformer etl is followed the same way in the target table which data we load that then staging area is where data quality checks are performed okay missing values missing attributes data quality means uh, to check means even i i work as the etl tester qa engineer for few months so in data quality checks what we used to do we used to check name of the column data types of column whatever data is there or if our data is from 2020 so before 2020 whether our data is showing our uh, date table or not uh, whether it is showing if it is showing then it is wrong because our data is uh, start date is from 2020 now how come it can show 2018 then okay then data vault is like uh, modeling methodology for designing what we say designing uh, warehouse that only i've said that whatever view or show procedure we make we make from data vault itself only okay so designing is done there properly so it involves structuring data into uh, structured data we always work on structured data only right? so structured data is like uh, rdbms in table form properly columns and rows data types everything is passed so this was about landing raw data or staging and again this question is not, not asked to power by developer but when i take interviews i always uh, go to ask this question the reason is because i want to see how much understanding a power by developer even has about data concept so that's the reason why i ask but it is not a compulsory question what is asked for power by developer so what is case when function in sql so see it is like conditional column in power bi only if you uh, if you had employee salary column so from 35000 to 45000 so you can say that you are passing condition if it is from 35 to 40 then give a if it is 45 then give b l c rest which is there so conditional column it is creating in this case case when is nothing like conditional column only in power bi so now what is performance optimization in sql 
so see uh, main thing is that whatever queries we write performance optimization is also there in power bi also there in power sql so in power bi how it is that how to decrease our file size so that publishing refreshing migrating deployment everything will happen fast okay and what is performance optimization in sql so whatever our queries we have written to improve its speed to execute okay to improve its speed to execute and efficiency of sql and all database what is there then this can include creating of primary keys indexing okay normalization and again uh, data types which are there you must know that some of the data types which are there like text date and time okay these de 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 data types which are there now they, those are mostly not used the reason is means if it is needed then we use only but the most the reason why it is excluded because it takes so much of time text and date, date and time data type it takes so much of time for loading and all those things so in performance optimization in sql first thing is that uh, you can say that to improve the speed of sql queries okay then efficiency for database all oper uh, operations then like creating of keys indexing then normalization or partitioning or group by binning aggregating or appropriate data type to uh, improve the speed of your sql queries like this now these three question tell me two three page names of your power bi report see first to summary it is there home page or summary we always give if transaction related data if you are showing on that page then transaction you can write there if some of the projections are there predictions are there then you can also write prediction projections there okay then uh, analysis if anything deep analysis there then you can write that tail and deep analysis all those things these types of page names are there whatever your power bi report has that you can tell as per the project or if financial logistics data is there then delivery partners uh, whatever are there restaurants that proper analysis is done healthcare related it, it is there i had work on one healthcare basic project so for medicines which were there so we have made that medical page also for it so you can write this two three page names into it how many workspace you had so see uh, it completely depends on project so if your project is really very big then we make workspace of uh, uat environment dev environment and prod environment or qa environment also so like this three four workspace separates are made and uh, whatever dev related files are there that we uh, put in that our uh, dev workspace and whatever um, QA related file are there, QA environment that are uh, put there and uh, prod related that are uploaded there. Okay. So if you are having different types of markets or countries related data is there, then US related one separate workspace will be made, UK related one separate workspace will be made like this workspace. But you can make as many as workspace like 8, 10, you can easily with pro account, you can make no issue with it. But it's always best to work with two, three workspace only. Otherwise, you will get confused many times. So, see uh, this uh, these types of twenty fifth question which is there. So, I'd ask him that uh, who was your favorite, who is your favorite politician or uh, sports player or actor? Then he went for politician, uh, the guy or student with whom I was taking interview. So in uh, product based company these types of questions are asked mostly so i had asked him who was your favorite politician and explain him in terms of data so he said that narendra modi is my favorite politician and somewhere he was able to answer that question he even answered properly but i will tell you answer of this question this question was asked to me in one of the product based company only few years back so let's see how you can explain now answer into this question Narendra Modi in terms of data you can start with that Narendra Modi was born on 17th of September 1950 so see here now one data has came 17th September 1950 second you can say that his current age is 74 again data came uh, and when it's not like that you should only speak on categorical uh, sorry numerical or numbers data but mostly uh, speak on that only if they are asking 
so you can see that bjp uh, his political party is bjp bjp is again a numerical sorry a categorical data then coming to numerical data numbers then bjp got 31% of vote with 282 seats in 2014 election so here numbers are there 31% of vote 282 lok sabha seats and in 2014 again in 2019 they got 37% vote with 303 uh, data uh for if from 2012 if you will do analysis of narendra modi as a pm candidate and as a pm he won around uh 70% of election so see so here you have shown duration from 2012 to 2024 and in this 12 years he won he won 70% of election this is again a data his assets whatever he has mentioned while um uh, contesting elections that 5 crore 10 crore whatever it might be then that you can tell he contest the election from varanasi varanasi is again the data no doubt in that okay so this type this way you can answer from last 10 years he is the uh, prime minister of country he visited 50 countries again data has came then you can say all those things okay so like this you have to explain whatever uh, these types of question are asked in problem based company so answer this question very properly and very smartly theek hai guys so see all 25 question i have covered so if you are having any kind of doubt make sure you are commenting uh, within one hour i will reply you and uh, if you have watched this video till end then thanks a lot for watching till end and if you are new on our channel make sure you are subscribe and pressing bell icon for all upcoming videos thanks for watching till end guys thank you